Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Token Games Podcast. I'm your host and sometimes referee, Zach Pearson, and today I'm joined by a detective who needs no introduction, and for $39.99, you can get him on your 3DS and help him detect shit, Pika Mitsu. So, I just finished up uh, setting up a connect on my computer so that I can do full body motion, aka leg tracking. So now when I'm in VR chat and I'm playing a game world, specifically hosting one, and someone pisses me off, I can now digitally kick them in the dick. Or cooter. You know, equal rights and all that. Proud of yourself? Yeah, it took a bit of time to fucking set up. It was a little bit of a pain, but I did it. Pika, I know I've known you the longest out of everybody. In fact, I'm I'm banking on around 11, 11 and a half years. I just want to say one thing. Sir, you are a Dr. Pepper commercial because you are one of a kind. Moving on. Today, we're also joined by the last officer of the 118th of an 18th of a lieutenant or one officer cops. You're the last one eighth of an eighth. Get it right. And of course, your friendly neighborhood, Zach's Pearson, and one other guy. First topic, cloud server gaming, the ultimate cheat sh- cheat stop. MMOs and any other video game that can only be played through MMOs, unlike other video games, can be only can sometimes be played physically or through a web browser. When played through a web browser, they have extremely f- small file sizes. For example. Fantasy Star Online 2 on the PlayStation Vita as well as the PC requires over 20 gigabytes of data to be played, whereas the Nintendo Switch Cloud version requires less than 100 megabytes. Yes, you heard me correctly. That's insane. You think that, but it's actually pretty normal. Also, cloud server data when modified, alternate from the sources that are not official, can be easily found and removed. Obviously, there will always be someone that tries to succeed, tries to succeed and circum at circumventing it. But the amount of time and effort in people changes. Do you think MMOs of the future and regular video games might end up being entirely browser based? Would that be a good idea or a bad idea? Why or why not? One twenty. Why or why not? Um, if they want to save space on. Uh, consoles, you know. No, I'm just kidding. Um, well, I mean, I guess it'd be easier on the, the companies to be able to keep track of all that stuff instead of having to worry about um, people needing space. Cause it, but then again, if they want to capitalize on it, they could just do it, make it less not web-based uh, so they can make you lose a lot of space so you buy more memory cards. Um but in the future, yeah, most likely it will be cloud-based. Um, just simply because it's more convenient. Mostly. Um, yeah, that's what it is. I just want VR to be uh, reality. Like in the video games. I mean, in the TV shows. Yeah, that's what I want. You want that digital pool, my boy? I'm sorry. Can can someone please translate his answer to me? Because I, I honestly didn't understand yes. it. I don't have a joke that goes here. Yes, so, he has admitted that he wants the digital pull. I'm 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 still lost, but okay, I guess. Uh Pika, you you might as well go, and frighten us. Okay. So, when you said browser-based games. The first thing I immediately thought of was, you know, Nutaku does some really uh, nice uh, browser-based games of the adult variety. But uh, hey, hey, hey! Yeah. I, I just want to point out I'm something. Not go into depth. No, no, no! That's not what I meant. I just want to point out no. something. I need you to remember. This yes. is going on YouTube. Yes, I'm just saying I'm not going to go into detail to get this thing like age restricted or whatever. I'm just saying that they're pretty much the leader in um, adult-based uh, browser games. I don't they want to know how you know a that. Shining example. Um, 
Now, as far as just browser-based games being extremely popular and becoming the lead in order to cut down on space, you have to take <clears throat> you have to take into effect not only the um, space you know reduction that it would help with as it being you know browser-based cloud whatever, but you basically have to treat it as just another form of PC gaming, which means you have to think about everyone as a whole. Are people gonna be able to keep up with whatever standards that browser gaming might evolve into, you know? Are they gonna get the graphics up to the point where, oh shit, there's this new awesome browser-based game, but I'm gonna have to upgrade my video card to get it. People play browser-based games because they have crappy PCs. You know, they won't, they aren't able to, you know, play those up to date, new hotness, all flashy graphics kinds of things. They, they, how do I put this? They sacrifice like the top of the line, like new hot stuff to get like the third rate, still kind of the same idea kind of games. But it'll run for them, it'll run nicely for them, so they're fine with it. Mm -hmm. If browser-based gaming gets to the point where it gets absurdly popular and people start putting like more effort and more uh, focus into it to the point where they have, they like start upgrading, you know, graphics and other things to try to beat out competition, then it's just going to basically slowly start catching up to PC gaming to the point where you're going to have to upgrade some shit in order to play it, and I don't think that's what a lot of browser uh, PC gamers want right now. You know? It's, 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 it's kind of that mixed feeling. So, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in the middle about it. Okay. You're not for or against it, you just accept it. Right. Interesting. Interesting. All right, what about you, officer? Mm, I'm also a big mixer on this. It could go in a pleasant direction, or potentially it could lead to a bunch of garbage. Time will tell, and mm, I'm willing to wait. It means uh, less hard drive space. Mm -hmm. That's certainly a plus. Yeah, I'm totally fucking against it, and here's why. Um, all right. So here's the thing about browser games. It, it's in the name. Can you play them without the internet? Obviously not, because well, those install files will be a lot, lot, lot bigger than a few little measly megabytes. But also because we do not live in a day and age where the internet has become a taxable commodity and it's available any and everywhere. We, we, we don't live in that age. Period. Not to mention companies could do terrible, terrible shit, much like what the attempts at, or I guess technically depending on how you look at it, the success of the depressing demolishing of the internet neutrality bill. Let's say you don't like that a game is fucking up or that it's got a day one glitch that makes something unplayable. What if they go and decide, oh, we don't want you to play our game ever again because you violate our terms of service and we don't want to give you your money back unless you sue us for it. And let's be honest, however big that lawsuit is, you're probably going to spend more money suing them than you will getting than you than you have put into that game. Even in the future, when games when games prices probably still haven't stagnated. I don't trust the industry with that type of power. I, I fucking don't. Not to mention, there's no proper government regulation, or rather, I should say, there's still no proper government regulations and guidelines for every little type of thing that has to do with video gaming coherently. What I mean by that statement is, anything and everything that could possibly go wrong hypothetically or that has already happened, there's not always a precedence for Sometimes shit happens and it's the first of its kind to happen. Or sometimes it could be up to the interpretation of the judge because there isn't something that he can just pull from from resources. 
I don't want to be playing a game, get good at a game, do absolutely nothing wrong. But because one person does one thing or one thing that ends up going online and becoming viral, I can no longer play that game. All of my save, save data is fucking worthless. And there is nothing the company can do for me to make any type of reprimands or reparations. Not to mention, who's going to control the pricing at that point? The video game industry has proven to us time and time again, if they controlled the pricing of shit, they wouldn't lower stuff so they can get more buyers. Yeah, the big corporations, uh, I know that the big corporations aren't everybody, but all bullshit aside, what is the, what is a, what is the business of a business to make money? So if you got a billion dollar company and you find out you can completely skip the middleman by saying fuck physical retailers, if you want some, get on the internet. You think they're going to charge fucking $20 or 10 bucks? Hell no. Nah. They're going to try to get 50 and 60 out of us. And that's if that game sucks. They don't care. I know that sounds very bleak and pessimistic, but I'm only going off of what's already happened. We've had any developers that were complete and total human scum. We've had noble corporations or people who appear to be noble in front of a camera only only to find out that they treat their employees like hot fucking garbage and ass. Do I want to trust the entire industry with my ability to play video games in my video game library going into a cloud? Hell no. Hell no. And even if they do have hackers, we all know what the hackers are going to do. They're not going to try to hack the game and play it online. They're going to pull the data from the servers for the games to function offline. That's what they're going to do. And then the company's going to have to spend money trying to fight them on that front. It creates more problems than it solves, in my opinion. So I'm completely against it for right now. Maybe 30, 40 years down the line, I'll change my mind. But 30, 40 years down the line, real talk. Uh, I'm going to be playing video games, but my main goal in life is to wake up my redheaded big old titty wife and then fuck her and then go back to sleep. 40 years, I ain't going to be no young man. Fuck that. Okay, moving on. Someone has wished for new data mine leaks from Shinron and gotten their wish granted. Character select information as well as avatar characters have been found in the game's newest patched code. Newest patched code. Yes. Say that three times fast. Let's take a minute to decipher this shit and see who these characters might be as well as talk about who we think should have been in season one. Now, I know you guys don't see the image, so I'm going to pull up the code information for you right now because I still have it in my phone and I can forward shit directly to Discord. Gonna show up the NPC. No, I'm going to show you code data. Just said that. Uh, I think you're ignoring that bad joke. Uh -oh, uh, uh, um, not really. Apparently there's something I missed. Anyways, uh, let me see if I can find this. Ooh, got it. Okay, now, let's see. Excuse me. Share. God damn it, phone. See, I don't hate terms of service notifications, but I feel like they should happen before I go into the app. Not after. Okay, here we go. Oh yeah, I've never logged in on Discord on this phone. God damn it.
Okay, this is pissing me off. Well, we're just going to pull it from Google. We'll deal with this shit later. Dragon Ball Fighter. See data line script. <laughs> this is a Spanish site. Has anybody seen Ready Player One yet? No. no. I have to do it tomorrow. I wanted to see it like 29th, but now nah, I got to do it tomorrow. It's really good. Well, I, I like it. I'll say that. Is someone calling me? The fuck? Hello? Hello? Who's this? Yeah, they didn't tell you about the surgery, did they? Oh, um, I had an invasive surgery on my torso, so I, he's, I was strongly advised to not, you know, finish up until I get completely healed up. I've got about 30 some odd stitches in my torso. Yeah, uh, if you want any information about the medication or anything, my doctor is Matthew Ronser. Thank you. Well, if there's one thing that's good about, you know, having my body fucked up, I don't have to have a dentist fuck my mouth up. Okay. Yeah. Open image, new tab. All right. Now, these are just some of the coding documents. And just so we're clear, I just want to point out, yes, these are coming from a Spanish or I guess possibly a Portuguese website. So... It goes without saying, take this with a grain of salt for the simple fact that, well, quite literally, I can't read it all. Now, I can send you guys YouTube videos, but obviously we ain't got time for that. And also playing a YouTube video inside of a YouTube video is not against the rules in terms of service, but it detracts from why we're really here. Now, are the images loading up for you guys? Uh, yeah. Okay, now, here's how the coding normally works. When you see the name Avatar, that lets you know that it's a character who's going to be in the lobby. So it doesn't necessarily mean they're playable. So there could be DLC avatars. However, the reason people are saying specific characters, Fuse Zamasu, um, Fuse Zamasu, Final Form Cooler, Android 17, uh, Caulifla or Kale, and Vegito, and someone else I'm forgetting about are going to be in the game is pretty simple. It's because they're, they have extra folders. Oh yeah. Normal Vegeta, normal Goku. They have extra folders in places that they shouldn't have them, like the character select folder, which doesn't feature any lobby avatars. They have characters in there, or they have character titles in there, but the folders are empty. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, given what we know mixed with what you guys have seen, because let's be honest, this has been the worst kept secret ever. I'm curious who you guys think should have been in the initial DLC roster for the uh, fucking people uh, for the first season. Also, for you people who bought or are thinking about buying a season pass, let me just tell you right now, uh, I've done some math, and yes, I know I suck at math, but this shit was pretty simple. Based on the price of the DLC character pass and the price of the individual characters, 
it's not really fucking worth it unless you like every character specifically. And I'm going to tell you why. Because it's only a five goddamn dollar discount. That's it. What? Most character passes save you 10 to $20. Their character pass only saves you five goddamn dollars. Five times eight is 40. Now, there are eight characters coming. So, the character pass is $34.99. And not, let's, let none of us forget, we all got different taxes to pay based on where we are. So, guess what? You're pretty much only saving $2 depending on where you're from. Maybe even less. So, I'm going to tell you right now. If there are some characters you don't give a flying fuck about, like at all, don't don't get the pass. Maybe wait for their a discount because they always say, oh, there's never going to be a discount. But that's bullshit. Remember, I got the entire I think I told uh, 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 Pika about it. I got the entire season two roster of Street Fighter five for 12 bucks because it was on sale at the end of the year of uh, 2016. Because I didn't buy any DLC characters. And I was pissed that half the people I wanted to play or thought was cool with DLC characters. Not to mention they were fucking low tier. Because they didn't know how to fucking patch and program them to be worth a damn until this year. Or, you know, get it on Steam. Yep. If you can get it to work on Steam. Anyways. Yeah. So, uh, Pika, you go first this time. Okay. I would just like to note that I care so little about the actual release process of the characters that are coming out that I am actually scratching my dick right now. Um, There's a little. Okay, um, well, I mean, I we kind of all don't care because it, again, was the worst kept secret ever. Mm -hmm. So nothing's yes. nothing surprised us at this point. Okay. I know. It's, it's just the matter of this. As long as the company puts in the characters that the fans want in the game... Everything will be happy or lucky. Do not do what Capcom did. Capcom is now the shining beacon of what not to do in a fighting game, as far as character selection is concerned. Do not do what Capcom does. Oh, please go so, into details and make it funny. Well, it's been told to death. Cap Capcom basically just said, fuck you to the fan base, even though the fan base was shouting at them with megaphones and running into their little Capcom headquarters dressed in all red going and just yelling at them in Ugandan fucking accents. Give us give us the X-Men. Why, why you not give us the X-Men? Where's Wolverine? And Capcom didn't do it. So they just said, you, you, you are not the queen. I spit on you. And Capcom just got spit on and shit on for it. So, you basically do not do what Capcom does. You will not get spit on. You will not get shit on. You keep the fans happy. The fans will keep you happy. The fans will keep you employed. End of story. Okay. So, moving on, officer. Yeah, I, once again, pretty much same thing here. Give fans characters that they're asking for. I mean... Okay, uh, it, are you on a phone or a headset, bro? Huh? Are you on a phone or a headset? Uh, left up mic. Why aren't you on your phone? Oh, okay. 
Because, well, I, I, I said it like a long, long time ago, like I think maybe a whole year, year and a half. But yeah, your audio quality goes way to fuck up when you do Discord on your phone. But yeah, continue. Just make sure, you know, you're close to your microphone. Yeah, yeah, well done. So, yeah, add the characters before or ask before. And obviously, they'll like your voice. It's probably best though that yeah they don't follow the bad examples set by Crafton. But well I think think that they are probably well aware of that. So eh, I don't think they're gonna make that mistake though. So. Listen to the fans and add the characters they want. Personally, I'd uh, maybe kind of like to see. Uh, maybe they could add cooler. Did you read the question? <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm not going to hold it against you if you did. Season one DLC that maybe later. Okay, I'm just gonna restate it for posterity's sake in a compressed version. I, I feel like maybe Coleman's answer drug out too long, and people just made an assumption about what I was asking. But point blank, the question was very, very, very uh, nostalgic, if you will, because I'm pretty sure we've asked different versions of it before. Do you believe the leak list is real? And are you disappointed or happy with the characters that have shown up on the leak list? Who would you have put in season one DLC that's not already there? Hmm. Yeah. Set. Uh, I don't see cooler in this list. Final form cooler. The oh. way it's coded, the characters have three letter initials that aren't necessarily I their name. I see. Hmm. Well. Yeah. Oh. Uh. Well, maybe, maybe they could go, maybe even add, what's it, uh, Dr. Giroux. You've got to be the only person on this whole fucking planet that thinks that. Eh, could be weird, but it could be interesting. Oh, it's going to be interesting by default because his wife and kid in robot form are already in the fucking game. But still, fucking... The interaction there. Yeah. Man. It's just... It could be interesting. <sighs> by the way, I think Gohan hates Gotenks. Like, I think he's genuinely annoyed by Gotenks. Really? Yeah. Their interaction just basically amounts to Gohan telling him, bitch, I swear to God, if you don't pay attention. Mind you, Gotenks is a joke character. Still, it just felt like, man, he's really, really mad. They made him a dunce. All right, Zeno, how about you? Um, I think they should. Well, the list, I hope it's not real, especially if they have regular form Goku. You know we can hear you playing PlayStation 4, right? No, you can't. Um, my bad, hold on. Uh-huh. 
It might be that close to the TV. Anyway, um, I just don't. I don't want them to add more people like another Goku form. Oh, you know that's, that's gonna happen. I I think that's ridiculous, but whatever. Just remember, we um, got his we got his daddy. We got him. We got him blue. We got his son, and we got his son fused with someone else's son. Uh, okay, I, I know this sounds terrible, but if you, you ever played Dragon Ball, what is it? Uh, what is it? Saga, where they had one arm Gohan, and he actually had one arm. That'd be pretty funny if they made like one of his costumes just one arm. But anyway, that's kind of weird. Yeah, that was funny. really fucked up. <laughs> um, I think I think they should add a uh, Super Seventeen. Cause it's so just, nobody's looking not... at the damn list. He's already in. They even found so, audio recordings super, for him. I thought you said oh, or never did. I don't know. Um, Pan maybe. Oh. Nigga. Or GT. Ooh. No, no. The first rule about GT is we don't talk about GT. There is no GT. It doesn't exist. We're going to throw whatever we... If they can put um, a can, a joke characters in Tenkaichi, why can't they put joke characters in fighters? No one like, said anything about no, joke characters. Go Tanks is a joke character. We're just talking about GT. I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying, if it's ridiculous there, why, why would that be any more ridiculous? Because GT is fucking garbage, and it could do Still more harm thing. than good. Still a thing. No, Doesn't mean that it's good for the franchise. Yes, it does. Let me ask no. you something. Let me ask you something. Yes, is Twi- was it's Twilight good it's for the movie industry? Exist. Hey, hey, hey! Answer the question. Was Twilight good for the movie industry? Nobody said it was. Well, liars did, but. You get my point. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. Okay, then I don't know anybody. Okay. I'm just going to say it right now. I'm not picking Ultra Instinct Goku to be in the list, but it's going to happen. It's totally going to fucking happen. Anyways. All right. Now, as far as... everybody went. Yeah, everybody went. As far as me, okay, just so we're clear, the way the roster is implying the characters are coming, it's going to be in pairs, but we kind of all saw that coming. 17, Final Form Cooler, Vegito Blue, Fuse Zamasu, who am I forgetting? We already got Bardock and Broly. Oh yeah, and Bardock and Broly. First time, first time Goku, adult Goku, and first time adult Vegeta, or possible adult Vegeta. It's hard to tell because they have been fucking up his height ever since, like, the Boo Saga, where his body somehow got longer, but he was still shorter than Goku. Personally, I, I, I'm, I'm really sad I didn't see Jiren on this list, but... If you understand how they're actually breaking down the attacks, they're legitimately waiting for material from the media. So that means from the anime and from the manga. Now, with that being said, I want to see them girls. More specifically, I want to see the fusion form. Because the fusion form was dangerous, but had some of the most creative key blast. Pretty much not really in Dragon Ball history, but in Super and Dragon Ball. Now, I don't remember if they all had names, but there were two that stood out to me. When they weren't fused and it was just Kale, not Kale, uh, Kefla. She did something called the Break Cannon. Break Cannon, which I think sounds like a Trunks attack. She made three condensed key blasts, kind of like freezing them tiny little balls, spanned them really, really, really fast, and then shot them off on both of her hands. Then, when she transformed, she made a bigger version of it. But on top of that, she had an energy blast that made three energy blasts wipe across the whole entire field in a 600 degree motion. So she stood perfectly still, 
made three lines of energy blast go around her in 360 degree motion. That's some crazy shit. That is some crazy shit. I'm sure other people will have far less noble reasons as to why they want Kefla to be in the game, but or Cauliflower, I can't remember what her fusion name is, to be in the game, but my whole thing is just that. First off, man, there's only like one canon playable fucking female in this whole thing. I'm well aware Dragon Ball is full of very, very few women who do anything of importance, but the Tournament of Power adjusted that number greatly. For like every three dudes, there was one, there was one girl who could do some shit. Or was legitimately in the Tournament of Power. You know what? Why don't you add another God of Destruction while you at it? I want that Fox guy who has energy blades for hands. That would be kind of cool. Yeah. And he actually got into a fight. Mind you, it was like a minute, 45 seconds should, at they best. Should topo. They should well, add Topo. We have enough Ginyu Force people. He's Pride Trooper. You know what I was, hey, hey, I made my decision. I made my decision. When I saw them dumbass poses, I was like, this motherfucker again, you force. Oh, look, it's Dragon Ball Super, so think about it. Think about it. The Saiyans in Universe 6 are opposite of 7. So instead of being evil, they're galactic warriors. Okay, well, now look at Universe 11. What's the opposite of the Ginyu Force? Pride Troopers. Hell, they fucking sound like Power Rangers. My statement stands. And Topo. Okay, well, the pimp hand of Topo cannot be denied. I feel like they're going to put his transformation on a meter like uh, Golden Frieza. Also, still kind of pissed that they don't fucking have a timer. Why do you have a transformation without a fucking timer if it can go out? Nobody does that. But, you know, talking about issues in Dragon Ball Fighters is like talking about water being wet. Swear to God, me and fucking uh, Zeno found at least four goddamn glitches or unexplained phenomena just playing the game yesterday. Like, the dash doesn't actually stop when it's next to a character. If it doesn't detect any form of collision detection... Like if the character's in an invulnerable state from wake up or something, the game will just make you dash into an invisible wall and you can't stop. It was, fuck, it was fucking stupid. Wow. That is pretty stupid. Yeah. Like it's the easiest fix ever. A, make the character stop or B, give us the ability to manually stop our dashes. Like simple shit. But then again, this is the game where damn near half of the mechanics aren't actually told to in tutorial and you gotta go on YouTube just to find them. I'm not joking, by the way. I'm not fucking joking. Facts. Facts. Anyways. Cause I'll, I'll, I'll be talking about shit to piss me off. I'm not one of those sore loser people. If you gonna whoop my ass, hey, I'm not about to rage quick. Fuck the bullshit. Namekians don't, Namekians don't rage quick, goddammit. So, to be honest, fucking, uh, whatchamacallit, hold on, someone thinks I'm a Twitch streamer, they mad at TwitchCon. Does, does Oob exist in super, or uh, has he been, like, um, what do you call it? How the Bush fuck do you really? not know if he exists, but you watch Dragon Ball Super? That false, false, let me tell you something. I said I didn't keep up. I just watched certain episodes. Motherfucker. I if he if he's I said I wasn't consistent. I don't care. Let me answer your damn question. Shit. If you've seen the end of Dragon Ball Z, you know that there's a ten year time gap and super happens in between that. So you already know Oob exists. Well, does I was saying that as as opposed to the game, as if they'll be able to add him. That's why I asked that. No, uh, no, but that might be a good inclusion, but the thing about Oob is that they would have to see something because there's n he's a blank slate at this point. He got trained by Goku. Okay, that doesn't tell us much. Does he have unique energy blasts? Does he have unique abilities? 
All we know is that he got trained by Goku. <laughs> now, if they did add him, it would probably be like Android 21. They make shit up from scratch. And they go from there. Because there's no material for Oob. Like, real, real talk. There's like nothing for him. Sorry to say. Moving on. Marvel Cinematic Universe villains have been a bit of an issue, by which I mean their longevity and way they are written are very arcane, to the point where even Kevin Feige, who used to supervise all the movies, has even acknowledged strong feelings have been a problem for, uh, sorry feelings, strong writing has been a problem for the franchise. So let me ask you guys, what do you think the Marvel Cinematic Universe has to do, or who do they need to have, who do they need to introduce to have compelling villains? With decent writing and character development. Pika. Okay. Now, I'll tell you this. I'm not much of a movie watcher in general. So, in retrospect. Stop being I a boring person. I much about the, um, the directing scene. As far as who's a good director. Who's a bad director. We're but, talking about the villains. Not the directors. Right. I'm saying. But, but, but yeah, I'm saying. To have a good villain with a good storyline and, you know, like all that good stuff with backstory, etc. and so on and so forth, you need a person who can create that, who has a vision to be able to make that villain good. And like I said, I don't know who would be fit for the job. However, any person could basically explain, if you want the best, you go out, you go... To the past and you look at the best movies that are from your genre and you take a look at who did those and then you say okay this person did this this and this they made this person look really good let's give him a shot you know just don't just go for someone based on name alone thank let's you say, fuck you michael bay like let's say you want to get well let's say michael bay Michael Bay is known for making explosions. <laughs> sure. I like how he's he not movies. Making he's known for making explosions. Of explosions. <laughs> now, let's say you wanted to get Michael Bay and put him into the director role for making a documentary about the mating process of lions. Okay. He is taken completely out of his like, line of work, like what he does. Taking someone from one area and putting them and dropping them into a completely different area, it just don't make any fucking sense. So, this is the one thing that they need to do. Don't do that. Instead, look back. Look at the history. People have made movies. People have made good movies. There are fucking, you know, places out there on the web that will tell you who did what? Do some research, damn it. People don't do research nowadays. Thank you. They just go out and grab, you know, the best names in the field without looking at why their names were made so popular and famous in the first place. Grab someone who is good at what you want to do. That's all they have to do, damn it. It doesn't have to be a super big name. As long as they get the job done, they could become a super good name. Just, just, just don't fuck it up. Jesus Christ. Oh, that was beautiful, man. That was fucking beautiful. Zeno. Zeno. I was muted. I wanted to make sure you could hear. I don't know. No, you were playing I, games. No, I, I literally was muted. I muted because I was like raging because my hut disappeared. Um, I I honestly just throw Galactus in there and, and make something. That's what they should do. From Marvel. Yep, that's my answer. Well, that was lazy. All right, uh, officer. Uh, lazy indeed. Yeah, I think. They should get, if they're having problems with the villains being all samey, bring in writers who can 
make more compelling villains. To be honest, I thought uh, Killmonger was rather compelling in uh, Black Panther. I mean, if you can get more writing like that, I think it'd be kind of nice. It'd be nice to have uh, more villains who can uh, beat up the main heroes. Not really that. More villains where perhaps you get to see, look at their motivation and like they go, you know. Maybe they're not. Did his mic cut out? Uh, yeah. Say that again. Uh, back quite a few. Shit. Is that me? Oh shit! Hey, my mic's cutting out. Hold on. James Cameron. I... James. Yep. The, the okay, movie. I'm back now. Yes. Say what you said again, uh, officer. Uh, all right, so I think they should get writers who can uh, make more compelling villains. Villains uh, like, uh, let me see here, two come to mind. Uh, there was Killmonger from Black Panther, as well as... Uh, uh, I forget his name, but from Spider-Man Homecoming, he was, uh... The, uh, uh, Vulture. Vulture, yeah. Both of them were rather interesting as villains. Yeah, they, they actually, well, you didn't so much see them as a villain and then they got power. It was a gradual decline into villainy, which is actually why I like, uh, Vulture as a villain. A lot more than, um, you know, people give him credit for. But what the big vulture? He's not really like a mainstream Spider-Man villain. Like, um, well, first and foremost, what becomes a mainstream villain determines how to, how well they're fucking written. He was written very well. Yeah. And even after, you know, his fall into villainy, he was still actually kind of a decent guy in a few respects. He cared about his family quite a bit. And he had enough respect to not reveal Spider Man's identity. So, yeah. We need uh, to get more compelling villains like that. Get, uh, get some writers who can, who can do that. Okay, so your solution is get writers that devote serious time and effort into the villain themselves, not how the villain reacts to the hero. Pretty much. Okay, uh, I guess that just leaves me. Well, suffice to say, um, I agree with y'all, but more specifically, I pretty much don't have a different answer for Matt. Look, the Joker isn't the Joker because he just is the shit. The Joker's the Joker because people constantly write him and they constantly challenge themselves or they constantly feel the need to make a beloved and good story not because he's the most popular villain no it's because he's written so much and so well that he's become a not notable villain become a popular villain I'll tell you right now if they didn't write a joker story for like five years and they wrote him about somebody else people still buy it yeah they'll still be hardcore joker fans but people still buy the new shit if it wasn't about joker Batman is, has a litany of villains that you could easily write a deep story about with or without Batman being in the story. Or rather, being a major player in the story. But, you know, obviously, some things have more of a nostalgic or attention or sentimental value or they have a higher natural detail. And I think that's what's really missing. When they write a story... In Marvel, besides the fact that it takes, uh, they know the story up to six months before us comic book readers do. The editor in chiefs know who the villains are and what they editor, the villains are naturally supposed to be doing to the character throughout the course of at least up to half a year in advance at a time. So they know 
pretty much at the halfway point of the story. Is this shit good or not? Yes, there are going to be some bombs that no one can predict. That's obvious with anything in, involving entertainment. Now, in the case of fucking uh, Marvel movies, though, it's a bit different. Sometimes it, it looks like they can't tell if they want to make a good action sequence with funny dialogue or if the villain's job. Oh, hold on a second. Or if the villain's job is just to be to make money for the studio. Like they're there to see, oh, how many toys or how franchisable is this character? Hmm. You know. Franchisable. Yeah, well, I mean, look, Disney works on a very specific logic. How much money can you make us? Period. Tron made its money back. Tron sold. And they still canceled it because they decided it didn't make enough money. But of course, behind closed doors, the thing is, oh, it's because we just bought Star Wars and it would cost us too much money to make a three right now. Nah, I'm not buying that. I play the bullshit card. Uh, well, here's the thing. A lot of big businesses operate with a deficit, which is stupid. But that's what the shareholders and people are for. The businesses owe money to operate. So what happens is the big corporations use the shareholder money and investor money to pay down what they owe so they can operate and generate income. So they still owe that money, but instead of owing it to one individual, they owe different sizes and different amounts. To shareholders, investors, that type of deal. I forgot what it's called, but it's very common for businesses to operate in a loss. That's why you see when you hear about someone's net worth, they don't say how much money they have. They say their net worth. Net worth means how much money they have after all of their debts to the government and people have been paid off. That's why you've never heard somebody say how much money Bill Gates has. You've heard what is Bill, uh, blah, what is Bill Gates net worth? Hey, uh, Zeno, get a verification of that and we'll talk about it. Yeah, I'll, I'll only believe that when I see it on the screen in front of me. Yeah, because this looks more like a screenshot. But if you can get some verification on it, uh, let me know and we'll talk about it. Moving on. Mm -mm -mm. What was the next topic? Marvel hasn't so much pain reluctantly. What the wow? I'm sorry, I'm reading from the wrong spot. Marvel hasn't so much as been reluctant to make animated movies as they've been completely absent in the computer generated graphic movie world. If you could take one character from a cinematic universe or hell, any character that is featured in a Netflix. Hulu ether of Marvel shows and give them a CG movie, who would you pick and why? Also, please don't say, oh, I want this person because I think they're cool. That's that that's boring. Get, give more details and eh, they look cool. And while Zeno's trying to verify that very, very optimistic image he put up, uh, we're gonna start with you, Pika. Well, it's, it's the ending, so that's not a problem. Just make sure you speak uh, up. I have always... I've said this one or two times before the podcast. She will get to know love, man. Like... This is true. She's she's there. I mean, things happen to her. Like, you could even get into her backstory of how she became she hope. That That is an unfortunate incident in and of itself. You know? And then... Evie can even get into her life beforehand. Like, you can throw, you know, a couple episodes into her life before she came to she Hulk, just to give her a bit of a backstory to lead people in to know, you know, she's not just this green chick with tight ass spandex and fucking chucking cars and then fucking making men a bitch when they throw them in the bed. It's like, it's, it's sex time, you know, and you ain't gonna stop. Because that happened in the comics. You can go read the comments. That happened. She she threw down on guys and they were like, so that. And it happened. But. Snooze, snooze. 
Yeah, basically snoozed him, but she kept him alive. Um, fair. But, I'm just saying. She, she hole man. Just, just do she hole Please do the she and, and, and with that, I'm gonna make my list. Nice. Alright, you guys take a piece. I can see it. I can see it. Because first off, Super Strength hasn't even been portrayed all that well in CG format. Basically, the holy grail of action CG is begins and ends with Final Fantasy Advent Children. But what about Kingslave? I'm going to tell you what about Kingslave. Fuck Kingslave. I could see animation errors in the fucking movie as I was watching it. I didn't need to see my friends go talk shit about it in slow motion. Not to mention, they barely had any fucking fights that were on the same scale as fucking in Advent Children. They were doing all these giant, pretty stone creature shit, but the stone creatures barely even fucking could move. Oh wait, one of them looked like a ninja. So? It was soulless. That movie was fucking soulless as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, Advent Children is where it begins and ends. Zeno, you're next. Shit. Oh, you still need oh. more time? I was about to copy the link to the... Okay, the officer, go. Uh, I think it'd be kind of cool to see... Because I remember when I watched Doctor Strange, the, the, the thing that really stuck out to me was their use of really fucking crazy CG. I think if they if it was just full CG and full CG used like to that extent and used exceptionally well, I think they could make it good. They could make something look even more visually fucking amazing. Admittedly, it's mostly just that I want to see something visually that interesting, I should say. Or possibly even more than uh, Doctor Strange was. So, Doctor Strange, because it would be a total mindfuck. Gotcha. Alright, Zeno. Who do you want to see in CG? Ooh, Iceman from... Uh... Explain. We know who Iceman is. Everyone knows who Iceman is. Oh, and if you don't know Iceman, you're thinking about Top Gun. Yeah, I think it'd be pretty cool to like when he's uh doing all like the ice and throwing it around and stuff like that to for them to like put that in motion. Uh, like usually, he's kind of like even if you know who he is, he's kind of under the radar. I feel like bringing him uh, some attention would be uh, good for the character. Plus, he's Iceman. I'm just, I just don't understand what, why the fuck they decided he had to be gay. And I just want to point out before we get any further, you know, I'm not a homophobe. I'm a big fan of Iceman and I didn't stop being him because he decided he likes penis more than I do. No, I just don't like the way it was held, uh, the way it was done. Spoilers. Five, four, three, to so teenage Jean Grey just fucking read adult Iceman's mind for no reason in the middle of a fucking conversation that had nothing to do with her and said oh hey you're gay you're actually gay and he's like surprise I was hiding it and, and and it was fucking just stupid not to mention he may or may not have a bastard that he made and on top of that fucking uh he's dated a lot of women and been a playboy basically like that, that, and like it was so just depressing and stupid how I was done. I'm just like, you don't have to be gay to realize that this is terrible writing. But I fucking love Iceman. They just did him cold. No pun intended. Also, the transition from like uh, his costume and stuff would be pretty legit in CGI. Yeah, like, even if they did the old shit from Spider-Man and his amazing friends in CG, that'd be fucking cool. Okay, well, I guess that leaves me. Well, I can't say Spider-Man because they're already doing a CG Spider-Man movie. Not to mention it's going to have... A series, didn't 
No, but they should. It's going to be, it comes out at the end of the year. It's called Spider Men. So you already know there's going to be some alternate dimension time hopping. But that aside, fucking, I want to see, uh, fuck, what's his name? I want to see Robbie Reyes or alternatively, I want to see the Guardians of the Galaxy. And I'm going to tell you why. Because the Guardians of the Galaxy deal with the shit that would have the most detail and be the most intricate and high profile. And since shit is CG, besides the fact that they could reutilize some resources, you know, it's going to be easier for them to deal with animation than it would be 2D drawings. It's not that I hate 2D, it's just, the you know how it is, the higher the detail, the more expensive it is for any form of animation. But when it comes to drawing, it's a whole nother ball game. Higher detail doesn't necessarily mean more work hours in the pipeline. It means more people to work on the shit versus more time rendering the shit. Obviously, you could also have more extra people on the rendering and animation side of things on top of that. But, you know, that's just how it go. That being said, um, fucking love the artwork, though. Anyways, all right, with that being said, I will see you guys when I see you guys.